بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين my dear respected brothers sisters viewers dear everyone السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to uh, this discussion regarding أمانة I'm really very happy and delighted that the brothers and sisters uh, in charge of the forces they want to uh, conference of forces organized by forces that they have it chosen uh, this topic and subhanallah i don't know whether it was uh, anyway it is the qadar of allah jalla ala that i'm writing a book about the 12 qualities of success although some people say make them uh, 13 qualities of success but anyway the 12 qualities of success and interest and it's interesting enough to say that among the very first qualities of those qualities of success, for success, for individuals, for societies, for civilizations is trustworthiness, trustfulness, honesty, and a manner, or as many people like to call it as integrity. Subhanallah, I love it. Uh, so, uh, integrity or uh, trustfulness uh, or truthfulness sorry trustworthiness what does it mean it means to have a strong set of ethical principles being able to tell the truth no matter uh, to tell the truth to act upon the truth no matter what the consequences are admitting to a wrong even if you could get away without doing so subhanallah amana is about doing the right thing in the right time uh, is to be honest to be honest with yourself to be honest with others amana the way i look at it my dear respected brothers and sisters is to be consistent with yourself first inwardly and to be consistent outwardly to be consistent uh, in times of happiness, to be consistent with yourself and outwardly in times of anger, in times of stress, in abnormal uh, circumstances. Uh, my dear respected brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, it is, we can say, or the way I like to look at it, it is uh, a manner, uh, truthfulness, is like conformity and uniformity, okay, within the individual, yeah, to be a uniform person where there is no dichotomy, dichotomy, there is no hypocrisy, there is no hypocrisy, and when the Prophet وسلم, spoke about the signs of the hypocrite person, when he tells, he tells lies, when he uh, is uh, given a trust, he breaks that uh, trust. When he argues with someone and has disputes with someone, he goes into the very far end and use unethical means to win. Subhanallah, that person has no conformity with himself, has no uniformity again with himself. Uh, uh, subhanallah, Amana, my dear respected brothers and sisters, it provides the person with consistency uh, with himself between his enter between his three powers. And the way our Muslim scholars, especially Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala and Ibn al Jawzi, based on the different hadith of the Prophet وسلم, and different verses from the Quran that we will come through, the way they look at integrity and amana, trustworthiness is more comprehensive than maybe the way many Western uh, experts have spoken about it, Western non-Muslims, I mean, uh, spoke about it, because they are, our Muslim scholars, they are talking about Amana, the way they understood it from Quran and Sunnah, and obviously Allah Jalla wa Ala, Wallahu Ya'alamu Antum La Ta'alamun, Allah Jalla wa Ala is the one who created everything, he created us, so he knows he is the most qualified one to talk about ourselves. So when we talk about Amana from that perspective, then we talk about it as a comprehensive uh, term, 
a comprehensive uh, maybe attitude character that leads the person to do everything that is right uh, sometimes sometimes uh, bearing in mind that the consequences or the price of that is quite uh, is quite high uh, that's why uh, when ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala spoke about uh, amana and truthfulness he was speaking about consistency between your heart your actions your tongue your actions between the three main powers your intellectual faculty okay and then not only that consistency between all these three powers but also consistency inwardly outwardly means with others others include what of course the first one we need to have amana with is amana with allah Jalla and the brothers the mashayikh is spoken about amana with allah Jalla. amana with what allah Jalla commanded us to show amana with amana mainly with the prophets amana rasul bima unzila ilayhi wal mu'minun kullun amana billahi wa malaikati so amana with the prophets amana with the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and then amana with the angels amana with the books of allah jalla wa ala amana in terms of ourselves and how do we perceive the qadr of allah jalla wa ala and amana in terms of ourselves and how we see the 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 hereafter so amana actually my dear respected brothers and sisters shapes your world view actually it is it 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 shapes yeah your world view and it shapes everything in uh, in your life not only it shapes your world view intellectually but actually it dictates the way you deal with yourself as we said and the way you deal with ours uh, that's why because of the importance of this quality trust uh, trust uh, trustworthiness uh, truthfulness uh, honesty integrity subhanallah if you google uh, the top qualities of leaders the best qualities of people you will see that so many people listed integrity and the trustworthiness as the very first equality yeah as the very first equality and many of them they say that it is the most important equality human beings let alone yeah let alone leaders should have it and subhanallah brothers and sisters i always say imagine yeah imagine uh, uh imagine uh, the the uh, imagine a society where okay uh, first of all imagine the main unit of the society family husband and wife i don't trust my wife she doesn't trust me. I don't trust my children. My children do not trust me. The children among themselves, they don't trust each other. Yeah? Uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the, uh, I don't trust other people, okay? And then expand on this. I don't trust my neighbor. The neighbors, they don't have any trust in me. I go to the masjid. I don't trust the people of the masjid. They don't trust me. I don't trust the imam. I work for a company. I don't trust the leader of the company. I don't trust the core workers. I don't trust the, the government okay, of my country. They don't trust the people. How is it going to be? How is it going to be? It will be hell. It will be hell. And that's why, subhanAllah, my dear respected brothers and sisters, the Prophet وسلم, says, لا إيمان لمن لا أمانة له. There is no iman for what? For the person who does not have amana. And all of us know, it was reported through the books of Sirah, that among the, 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 the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was known in his people, some people say as sadiq al-Amin, but most of the books of Sira quoted him as Al-Amin, that uh, quoted to that the Quraysh people, the disbelievers, 
yes, called him as what? As Al-Amin. And there are many incidents, no need to go into those incidents. This is known. Why is this? Why is this? Because Allah Jalla Ala knows that the people will never accept a person whom they don't trust. Simple, simple. That's why, just if you remember this point, my dear respected brothers and sisters, they will, this will cause a transformation in your life. If you want to be successful as a husband, if you, sister, want to be successful as a wife, if you want to be successful as a father, as a parent, as a child, as a brother, as a worker, as a manager, as a leader, as, uh, 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 as uh, a member of a team, as a member of any country, as the leader of the country, if you want to be successful as a human being, then you have to have what? Amana, subhanAllah. You have to have amana. This is what? This is equality number one that you have to have it. And subhanAllah, in Surah Al-Shu'ara, Allah Jalla wa Ala mentioned five or six prophets and all of them, yeah? Qala, inni lakum rasulun ameen. Inni lakum rasul, okay, this is known that he is a prophet, but also ameen, yeah? Why? Because they know the status of amana within people. People will never accept, as we said, a person who is not Amin. And that's why, subhanAllah, when, uh, when um, I, I'm sure one of the Mashaykh yani, mentioned this, and that's why I don't need to uh, men dwell in it, I'll just mention it uh, quickly. When that, uh, that girl, uh, when Musa alayhi salam helped to those two girls, and then they went to their father, and whether they wanted to get married to this person or uh, they, they wanted the father to uh, hire him. And of course, in the Quran, that uh, they, they wanted their father to hire him and they wanted the father to reward him first. And then they suggested that the father hires him. Some people say maybe there was an indication that why doesn't the father offer one of them as as uh, as a wife for him. Anyway, what did she say to the father? Inna khayra man al al amin. Yeah, the she mentioned that the best person to employ is what al qawi. He knows the job and what the trustworthy person. And Subhanallah. Now, if you survey what companies are looking for when they want to hire someone. They say, a person who is qualified, he knows the job. But that is not enough. Because if he knows to do the job, yet he's not a trustworthy person, then he is useless. And uh, here, I, subhanAllah, I, uh, let me find it. I remember a quotation from, uh, from, from one of the very wealthy people. Uh, let me find it. In, in, in. Anyway. Uh, yeah, he said, uh, uh, he said, anyway, he said the quality number one that I am looking for, and after, uh, after long study, equality number one that I look for in, uh, in the employee or the person that I would like to employ is what? Is to be integral, okay? To have integrity. Anyway, I don't think that anyone would doubt the importance of integrity in uh, our life. Now, uh, to be honest with you, yeah, uh, my dear respected brothers, uh, yeah, yeah, I found the, 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 the quotation. Let me read it, okay, for you. It is a very interesting quotation. His name is uh, Warren Buffett, an American billionaire. And he is also intellectual, and he was uh, also an author. Um, I, I think his age now is maybe 90 or something. He was born, uh, yeah, he was born in 1930. He says, somebody once said that in looking for people to hire, you look for three qualities, integrity, intelligence, and energy. And if you don't have the first, the other two will kill you. 
You think about it. It is true. If you hire somebody without integrity, you really want them to be dumb and lazy. Subhanallah. So, uh, because if there is no integrity, then there is nothing. And also, Zig Zagger, Zig Ziglar, uh, he is one of the, 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 the famous authors who wrote about uh, success. He said also, it is true that integrity alone won't make you a leader. Very nice statement. I really like that. It is true that integrity alone won't make you a leader, but without integrity, you will never be one. See? Integrity alone doesn't make you a, a leader, but without integrity, definitely you will never be a leader. Let me add to that, I like to say you will never be a successful person. And subhanAllah, imagine the Prophet Sallallahu summarized this by saying what? La imana liman la amana talahu. There is no iman for the person who is what? Who has no amana. And uh, we also know the story of Yusuf alayhi salam when uh, the, the uh, king uh, he said, I want to appoint you, okay? I want you to be next to me. Yusuf, alayhi salam, yeah, uh, he was addressed by the king by what? Innaka al-yawma ladayna makinun amin. You have a position, makin, a position. And what amin? We trust you. Subhanallah. Although they put him in jail and they accused him of his chastity, but after that, they discovered that he is a trustworthy person. And as a result of this, the king said, well, actually, he's a person that we can, uh, we can hire. Uh, now, brothers and sisters, as I said, I'm sure everyone of you uh, knows the importance of Amana and every one of us uh, acknowledges the status of Amana. A few points here. Uh, how to how to develop our amana? Maybe that was a point that maybe the brothers have not spoken about it. How to develop uh, our amana? Subhanallah. First, let us go for the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam when he said, "Alaykum bil sidq." Yeah, stick to sidq. And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said, "Wala yazal al-rajul." يصدق ويتحرى الصدق حتى يكتب عند الله صديقا وإياكم الكذب فإن الكذب يهدي إلى الفجور ولا يزال الرجل يكذب ويتحرى الكذب حتى يكتب عند الله كذابا سبحان الله this hadith is a very central hadith in أخلاق and developing and improving yourself how to improve yourself step number one yeah have that quality as one of your aims to have. Okay, so what does it mean? Brothers and sisters, you should, I always say that, and this is what I mentioned in the, the qualities, the 12 qualities of uh, success. Why don't we have, as one of our aims is to be among the best in akhlaq? Yeah, who among us, have this as a vision. My vision in this dunya is to be the best of people or among the best people in our akhlaq. So in the morning when they wake up, yes, they want to improve in their akhlaq. In the evening, they hold themselves accountable. Have they improved their akhlaq or not? When they have an argument with someone, have I acted in the best akhlaq or not? Have ask people, let us do some surveys. How people see me? Do they see me as a person of akhlaq or they don't see as a person of akhlaq? And what kind of akhlaq? And that's why I obtained those 12 qualities in order for you to list them in front of you all the time to see how do you behave according to those 12 measures. Because if the person has no like a criteria to measure himself or herself against, then he would he might think that he is having a good akhlaq or 
uh, or he might think that uh, he's doing well, but in reality, he is not doing well. And as you know, that the Prophet وسلم, says, the closest people to me on the day of resurrection are what? Ahasinuhum akhlaqa, are the best in their akhlaq. And the Prophet وسلم, says, I was sent in order to perfect the manners of uh, people. So the first equality, have this as a vision, which means that I want to improve my akhlaq in general, and I want to improve my integrity, yeah? Because the Prophet وسلم, says, alaykum bi sidq istik to sidq. Okay, so this is equality number one, my dear, uh, or step number one, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Now, let us move. Step number two, okay? I try to practice that khuduq, yeah? The Prophet وسلم, says, فَإِنَّ الرَّجُلْ لَا يَصْدُقْ وَيَتَحَرَّ صِدْقْ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صِدِّيقًا practice it fail one time but come again and try again yes i uh today i made those mistakes let me improve myself and my dear respected brothers and sisters especially for you as young people don't ever give up yeah one of the key qualities of success is sabr consistency that you keep trying 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 that's why the prophet وسلم, says what a sabru diya yeah, a sabr enlightens your life because you will keep doing, doing, doing until what? Until you achieve. So that's why the Prophet says, Asid means he's putting effort to be a truthful person who fill, who fill, who fulfills the amanat. Okay, so uh this is the second step. Do it once, do it twice. Keep doing it, keep doing it until what? Until you become, as some scholar says, that you become uh, a Siddiq. Okay, uh, another important way to uh, get into uh, truthfulness, my dear respected brothers and sisters. And it is a habit that, or it is a practice that will help you to get rid of many qualities and to gain good qualities. Avoid living with people, yeah? Mixing with people as much as you can, yeah? Those who have no amana in their life, yeah? Avoid, avoid that. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, As-sahibu sahib, your friend who is close to you, he will pull you, yeah? He will pull you. So if he is a trustworthy person, he will pull you towards that. If he is the opposite of that, yeah, a person of khiyana, okay, he betrays others, he is a person of treachery, then avoid him. And all of us know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he gave the example of the, uh, the, the good person and the bad person, the companion of a good person, uh, and uh, as if you are sitting next to the person who sells perfume, you will come out with good smell or he will gift you something or he will sell you good uh, equality, good perfume. On the other hand, if you are sitting next to the blacksmith, definitely you will get some of the, 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 uh, the smell there, which is not a very uh, pleasant smell, okay? This is, subhanAllah, uh, in the Quran, we find that, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullaha wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. Allahu Akbar. In particular, be with the people of truthfulness. Yeah? SubhanAllah, why Allah Jalla wa ala singled this equality? Wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. Kunu ma'a sadiqeen. Kunu ma'a and min. But here, Ma'a means be with, yeah? Be yourself a sadiq person, but also live with the sadiqeen. Why? Because you will copy this, uh, this quality from them subconsciously. You will act upon that equality. Not only that, brothers and sisters, but when you are living with a person whom you do not trust, you will always feel 
what insecure and when you feel insecure that is not good for your own development as a human being yeah you need to feel secure in order to develop organically in order to develop the very good uh, qualities so th so this is third and fourth equality which is be away from non trustworthy people uh, and be next as much as you can uh, to the trustworthy uh, people fifthly subhanallah uh, accountability brothers and sisters and again this equality helps you to uh, to develop so many good quality or this exercise sorry accountability that's why uh, umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says ayyuhan nas hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu hold yourselves accountable al-ghazali spoke about accountability and musharafa yeah and he said one of the very worst qualities of a human beings is that they don't hold themselves accountable for what uh, whatever they have done ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned uh, something similar he said ashaddu ma ala nas or yani one of the very bad worst qualities people have is al ghafla wa tamshiyatu al hal wa adam al muhasaba ghafla heedless okay uh, being heedless heedlessness where you just let it go and don't hold yourself accountable yeah and many uh, uh, Ibn al Jawzi, the other Ibn al Jawzi, not Ibn al Qayyim, he said that by the end of your day, you should hold yourself accountable for whatever. And Ibn al Qayyim also mentioned this for whatever you have done throughout your day. Yes, because if you don't hold yourself accountable, you might commit so many treasures or mistakes, or uh, you were not that trustworthy person. Uh, and you will let it go. But when you hold yourself accountable, then you will always uh, try to correct yourself and improve yourself. Uh, and, uh, you know, Allah Jalla says in the Quran, there are so many verses that uh, command us to hold ourselves accountable. Uh, yeah? fear one day then when you go back to Allah Jalla and then you will see you will receive whatever you uh, you you used to do in this dunya and that's why Allah Jalla uh, says also in uh, the end of Surah Al-Hajr Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad oh uh, believers fear Allah Jalla and see whatever say what what are you present what are you preparing for the day of resurrection okay I, and I, i'm sure that mashaykh have spoken about yani so many examples uh, of amana and how much uh, and and the ayat that talk about uh, amana okay uh, another the sixth point that i would like to mention here especially regarding amana see the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam says in one beautiful hadith one deep hadith philosophical hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says al halal bayin halal is clear and haram is clear wa baynahuma umurun mushtabahat there are doubtful matters between uh, the halal and the haram and hadith an nu'man ibn mushir well known hadith and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam says Many, many the one kar, the prophet sallallahu said avoid doubtful matters why okay as much as you can of course why because the shepherd who is leaving his uh, cattle sheep goats etc to uh, to graze next to the fence of a land that belongs to someone yeah then one of them will jump easily okay because she or it is next to the fence of uh, the land of the other person but if he leaves them to graze yeah takes him uh, uh, takes them to graze just away from the fence 
then even if one of them jumped, it will not jump into the haram territory. Okay? Now, the person loses the amana. See, brothers and sisters, just I'll give you a simple example, please. And maybe let me just yani, conclude by, by this. Yeah? Let us take about, let us talk about the amana with Allah Jalla Yeah? And uh, as we said, the amana is a comprehensive term. And I'm sure one of the scholars have spoken about the main verse of the amana when Allah Jalla Ala says, Inna aradna al amana ta ala samawati wal ardu wal jibal, fa bayna an yahmilaha wa ashfakna minha wa hamalaha al insan inna hu kana valuman jahula. We have presented the amana, okay, in front of the uh, four, the earth, uh, the uh, heavens, the mountains, all of them decline because it is something heavy. But the human beings, they held the amana and they were, uh, they show, they showed responsibility to, to, to hold the amana. Now, what is the amana here? The amana is, as the scholar says, the commandments of Allah Jalla and the prohibitions of Allah Jalla And that includes everything. Yeah, everything Allah Jalla commanded us to observe. Then that is part of the amana, which includes the rights of Allah Jalla and the rights of human beings. Everything Allah Jalla commanded us to abstain from, yeah, this is part of the amana, whether it is the rights of Allah Jalla or the rights of human beings or the rights of any others, even other than human beings. Now, what I wanted to say, brothers and sisters, let us talk, let us take an example with the amana of Allah Jalla Ala and uh, and how to avoid the gray areas or how to leave a space in order to avoid falling into the haram. Let us take this example. Now, Allah Jalla Ala commanded us to, to pray five daily prayers. Yeah. And the Prophet Sallallahu encouraged us to pray the Sunnah. Yeah. To, the, to pray the Sunnah. Now, see, the Sunnah is a protection for the five daily prayers. Yeah. If you leave the sunnah, then definitely you are going to what? To leave one of the five daily prayers or you are very likely, you are not going to do them as they should be done. But if you are putting a shield to protect your five daily prayers by the sunnah, then, okay, uh, the shaitan, if he wants to attack you, if he wants to attack your fence, the shaitan will attack you in what? In your uh, supervisory prayers, the nawafil, the sunnah prayers. And then it will take him some time to attack what? To attack your farm. Yeah. So the person who is praying the fara'id and the nawafil is very unlikely to leave the fara'id. But the person who is just praying the fara'id, it is e much easier for him to leave the fara'id. Similarly, if you are just if you are just fasting the month of Ramadan and no sunnah, you will find even fasting Ramadan is so difficult. But if you are praying, uh, if you are fasting the month of Ramadan and sometimes you fast, okay, more than Ramadan, you regularly fast Mondays, Thursdays, or the three white days as the Prophet ﷺ used to do, etc. Then fasting Ramadan will be much easier and you will be more worried to protect the fasting Ramadan more. Now, this is with the rights of Allah Jalla Now, with the rights of people, if you, for example, backbiting, one of the very bad habits and it breaks the amana or slandering, if you make your tongue easy with people, you just uh, mock this person, mock this community, speak negatively about those uh, people, then you will continue doing this more and more. But if you are careful even not to annoy them and you put a barrier between yourself and, and backbiting, then you will not just come close to backbiting, let alone just you will make it uh, a practice of yours. Similarly, the person who is taking uh, who is easy in taking money or uh, properties that maybe yani, there is a doubt uh, uh, regarding them. Yeah. 
So he will say, well, it is a doubtful matter, it's fine, take it. Then later on, if the doubt is, uh, is not that strong and the doubt is, uh, is very light, it's still, you will take it, yeah? And then if there is no doubt, it is clear haram, but it is not a major haram, then you will say, well, it is not a major haram anyway. Slowly, slowly, until what? Until you will do the major haram, yeah? And this is with everything, my dear respected brothers and sisters, the rights of Allah, the rights of people, and even the rights of your uh, nafs upon you. Okay, so these are just, just uh, very quick tips about how to improve uh, integrity. I think, inshallah, yani, um, I have covered like yani, the, the, the uh, topic uh, from different angles. I just want to conclude that my dear respected brothers and sisters, please, please, yeah, be the messengers of the of Islam, be the messengers of our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We are entrusted by heavy responsibility upon our shoulders. Allah Jalla wa Ala, Allah Jalla wa Ala, sorry, yeah, Allah Jalla wa Ala, uh, sorry, can you hear me or was it cut off? Okay. No, yeah, don't worry, it should be, yeah, should be sorry. done. Allah Jalla wa'ala, my dear respected brothers and sisters, selected the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You were the best nation ever raised to mankind. So we should be the best of people in everything and in particular in, an, in our akhlaq and in particular in our integrity and our amana, our honesty, our trust worthiness, our truthfulness, our trustworthiness. If we don't have those equalities, then we are the most losing people. So brothers and sisters, have this as a goal. Have this as a goal, especially when we are talking about uh, the, the, the current political social environment that we are living in. We ask Allah Jalla Ala to uh, make us among those who have the best akhlaq and to improve, to help us to improve our akhlaq. Uh, we uh, make this dua, Allahumma inna nas'aluka ya hayu ya qanyum ya badi'a samawati wal ard an tarzuqana wa an tahdiyana li ahsan il akhlaq la yahdi li ahsaniha illa an wa an tasrifa anna sayyaha la yasrifu anna sayyaha illa an jazakum Allahu khayran barakallahu fikum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Allah preserve you, increase you, um, and accept it from us all. Um, Shaykh, would you be happy uh, to, to answer a couple of questions? Or, yes, or? yes, of course, of course. Alhamdulillah. Um, so we've got some on the screen. Um, I'll read them out uh, just for the sake of everyone, inshallah. Um, so the first question is, how how can we practice being accountable um, in our everyday life? I was, I was going to ask a similar subhanAllah. You know the small things, uh, promises, etc. Yes, very good. Uh, see, first of all, uh, brothers and sisters, I don't know who is asking this question because some of our brothers, they are over, brothers and sisters, they are over sensitive. Yeah. And they make deen for them difficult and they make life difficult for themselves. I'm not talking about that, my dear respected brothers and sisters, because I don't want you to have, uh, to have such qualities because such qualities can be damaging for you, yeah? Especially, and I would like Yanni to give you uh, a very general, maybe, uh, or a yardstick to uh, evaluate whether you are uh, doing it correctly. I mean, holding yourself accountable or uh, doing it wrongly, okay? And doing it in, in a wiswas way, in an OCD uh, matter, okay? See, if, the accountability yeah that you hold yourself to makes you please listen carefully brothers and sisters because this is really very important many people when we talk about these issues they take it to another level an extreme level actually and that becomes harmful uh, for uh, themselves okay like 
Number one, this accountability, does it make you closer to Allah Jalla Ala? Does it make you loving Allah Jalla Ala more? Does it make you fearful of Allah Jalla Ala more? Does it make you grateful to Allah Jalla Ala more? Number one. Okay, number two, does it help you to do more good deeds and abstain from bad deeds? If it did, if it is not, then this accountability, you are doing it wrongly. Number three, does it improve your akhlaq? Yeah, if it makes you a negative, uh, uh, sorry, if it, if it doesn't improve your akhlaq, then you are doing it wrongly. Number four, does it make you a positive person or does it make you a negative person who is sad most of the time? Yeah? If you are, if this accountability makes you a negative person, again, you are doing it wrongly. And number five, okay, there are some other measures, but these are the key measures. Does it make you a person who have good communication with others or isolated person because you are always sad, low and isolated. Okay, so this is number one. Now, the other thing is every, uh, by the end of your day, by the end of your day, think of what you have done, yeah? And survey them, okay? And start with the fara'ib. Don't start my dear respected brothers and sisters, with the very minor issues. And this is a big mistake many brothers and sisters do, okay? They immediately think of the very minor issues. And as a result of this, they become occupied by those minor things. And actually, yani, sometimes if we want to yani, uh, give an academic answer, first of all, uh, okay, think of, yani, uh, generally speaking, did you show love to Allah Jalla Ala? Did you show fear of Allah Jalla Ala? Did you show the glorification of Allah Jalla Ala and his messenger? And then that, if you are a person who have wiswas, don't just leave this, okay? Because you might just pick a minor thing, yeah? A minor thing, and let us go back to the five elements that I have mentioned, and then you dwell into that and you forget other major things thinking that this is related to aqidah. Be careful. Then after that, okay, think, have you prayed your five daily prayers? Okay, the main rights of Allah Jalla Ala, the five daily prayers, have you delayed them, not delayed them? Have you tried to pray them uh, 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 on time? Have you, for brothers, have you tried to pray them in jama'ah or not? Okay, now, then, uh, of course, if you are fasting or if, if it is Ramadan, then ask yourself, do, uh, have you fasted or not? Then ask yourself regarding the rights of others. Yeah. Have you taken the money of others? Okay. Have you physically, yeah, any unlikely that you will do something against others? Have you emotionally, yeah, taken the right of uh, others, okay? And so by this categorization, you will be able to uh, know whether you are on the right path or not. Again, brothers and sisters, please, 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 okay? Remember the five things that I have mentioned. If this accountability is improving you in those five dimensions, then this accountability is positive. Otherwise, it is uh, done in the wrong way. Okay. Second question. Um, we've got five minutes, inshallah. Yeah. Um, and so, so we'll just go through as many as we can, inshallah. Um, how do you overcome the guilt uh, that you don't do enough for Allah? Okay. Good, good question. Good question. I'm expecting this question from young people like yourselves. Brothers, sisters, please. That's why I am insisting on those five things, yeah? When you feel guilty that you are not doing enough with Allah Jalla Ala, check yourself. Now this, the, the, the feeling of guilt, 
Does it improve on my relationship with Allah Jalla? Or I just feel guilty. Yeah, feel guilty. And then what? You do not improve your love of Allah Jalla, your fear of Allah Jalla, your glorification of Allah Jalla. Yeah. Then secondly, does that improve my good deeds? I feel guilty. Do I make more istighfar? Do I pray more? Yeah. Do I fast more? Do I give sadaqa more? Yeah. No. Then this is false fe feeling. False feeling. Don't, don't, don't deceive yourself. Don't let the shaitan deceive you by saying, oh, you feel guilty and then you feel sad and you still, you remain paralyzed. You do not improve yourself. So this is the second quality as we mentioned. Then check your akhlaq. Do I improve my akhlaq? Okay. Or actually, no. Uh, my akhlaq is becoming worse as a result of this uh, uh, guilt feeling. And then after that, what a check whether you, your relationship with people, am I isolating myself? I feel guilty. Yeah. And sometimes this is a deception from the shaitan because you want people to sympathize with you. Yeah. You don't want, you don't want to do something that Allah Jalla Ala becomes pleased with you or Allah Jalla Ala forgives your sins. No, you just want people to say, oh, what's wrong with you? I feel sorry for you, or you are a good person or this and that. And the other thing is, Allah Jalla Ala, as Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, never mentioned uh, sadness in a positive way in the Quran. Allah Jalla Ala doesn't want us to be sad, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Even if we cry, yeah, because we remember Allah Jalla Ala, that should not, there is a difference between sadness and the cry out of fear of Allah Jalla Ala. Allah Jalla Ala doesn't want us and that is also between us and Allah. Allah does not want us to be people of sadness. لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Allah, the, the Prophet وسلم, prohibited Abu Bakr or he told Abu Bakr, don't be sad. Allah Jalla wa also says, إن النجوى من الشيطان ليحزن الذين آمنوا. So the shaitan wants to people to make people sad because sad in what is the word decapacitate the person from being active yeah okay subhanallah uh you know these answers are real you know it's so easy with these brains to kind of deceive ourselves but yes. um, that's why have to be yani, real with with young you know? people with young people i always focus on this because yani uh i uh, you know in the fatwa line etc many young people fall into this and they don't find many answers for such questions yeah uh, we'll, we'll do one more question inshallah uh, so someone says they're struggling with sabr um, although they have the intention uh, their actions don't follow um, and thus there's a lack of motivation um, so perhaps not a question uh, but your thoughts inshallah Sheikh. okay see um just quickly brothers okay regarding this sabr uh, remember uh, what the Prophet sallallahu says, stick to Sidq and try to what improve your Sidq and uh, try to focus on uh, telling the truth all the time, acting upon the truth. So keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. This is number one. Number two, brothers and sisters, one of the biggest problem of many young people is they like to live in their comfort zone come out of your comfort zone, okay? Now, sometimes you don't know what is your comfort zone. I strongly advise people to do things, yeah? In the training that we give, we say identify five things that you don't like and identify five, five things that you cannot leave, yeah? So five things that you don't like, five things that you like, in a way that you don't think that you can stop them, okay? For example, five things, and uh, one of the brothers one time, uh, yeah, okay, example, example, even simple examples. Uh, okay, uh, I, I can't, uh, yeah, I can't take cold shower. Yeah, I can't, cold shower. Uh, I can't but to drink coffee every morning yeah 
I can't but shout. Yeah, these are examples. Uh, I can't but, you know, uh, eat sweet. Yeah, examples. Now do the opposite, provided that it is not harmful and those are not harmful. Okay, so try. Uh, and of course, it try first one week to do that one week, then maybe extend that, extend that in order to gain what? In order to gain something called self-control. Once you have self-control, you will be able to what? To have sabr, because sabr in reality is what? Is self-control. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah, said, Laysa shadidu bis surah. The strong person is not the one who is physically strong. Yeah. The shadid, the strong person, is the one who controls himself when he is angry. So the Prophet Sallallahu here mentioned the three powers. The intellectual power, the physical power, and the spiritual power. Okay. Now the spiritual doesn't mean يعني, the, the positive spiritual power, all the spiritual power. Your mind should control the other two powers. And you need to do that strong will. And in order to have strong will, you need yeah, to go against your desires and train yourself to go against your desires. Slowly, slowly, you will, inshallah, achieve it. Yes. Allah, um, you know, in lockdown, it's so easy to fall into stay where you only do what you wish right um yes and, and so it's so and important by the, to, by the way you know. i like i like always to say to b b young brothers yeah which is yani i always uh to mention this do we do what is right or do we do what we uh-huh yalla abdullah sorry do we do what we of course Sorry, I, think, I, I, ask, I'm, I'm I, ask I didn't people, get the <laughs> yeah I ask people yeah uh do you yeah any uh, uh what did you study I studied engineering dentistry etc etc why I like it I like it I like mm. it this is the answer then I say okay so people do what they like yeah yeah and everyone now everyone is speaking about what do what you like isn't yeah. it Okay, yeah. well, I like these clothes. I like this uh, to study this. I like this guy. Da, 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 da. But no, 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 uh, you yeah. should do what is right. Yeah. And there is a huge difference. And sometimes there is an overlap between both. Yeah, the key thing is do what is right, irrespective of whether you like it or not. And that helps young people a lot. Please, brothers and sisters, you are listening. Please think of that. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh, uh, I don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, we just have two very quick questions, uh, inshallah. Yeah. Very quick ones. Uh, so the first one, uh, you mentioned a dua uh, at the end. Sorry, yes, yeah, so there's a dua asking for a good character. Someone's asking if you yeah. could just share. Allah share may as a look at, yeah, maybe I can send it to the brothers, but if you want to record it, yeah. Allahumma hadini li ahsan al akhlaq. لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت واصرف عني سيئها لا يصرف عني سيئها إلا أنت. Sometimes yeah. we can add to that that there is no problem. Yeah. Uh, اللهم اهدني لأحسن الأخلاق والأفعال والأقوال لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت واصرف عني سيئها لا يصرف عني سيئها إلا أنت. Yeah. So yes. guys, um, that should be on on our YouTube stream, inshallah. Sheikh, I promise this is the last uh, question. Uh, no, we're, no we're very problem. interested. We're very interested in your the book you're you're writing. Uh, so I think someone's just wondering what the what it will be called. Uh, yeah, it will be inshallah. It. it will be. Uh, by the way, if there is anyone, uh, brother or sister, who can help in uh, finishing this book, okay, uh, then please, yeah, come along. Uh, we are going to call it the Twelve Qualities of uh, success, yeah, or for success. Uh, I've been working with a few brothers on this. Actually, myself, I was involved in this for maybe more than 20 years now. 
yeah because my background is uh, management and i like management and, uh, so much and i was identifying the top three qualities the top five qualities the top nine qualities and so on and then the brothers suggested that okay i put it in uh, i gave so many seminars about it but then they said okay let us put it in a book so there are a few brothers who are working uh, on putting this together as a book yeah um, yeah, we are maybe in the, not in the beginning, in the middle. Uh, I would like really from you talented brothers, okay, especially if there are good writers, yeah, uh, especially if there are brothers or sisters who study management, uh, psychology, uh, sociology, yeah, because these are the topics that really can contribute in this field. Then, yeah, please come forward uh and you will inshallah get uh, yani a huge reward inshallah when you participate in a book that will benefit muslims and non-muslims uh alike yeah inshallah so for sake of contact so uh, 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 how can we contact you in, in yeah this regard? Uh, uh, give the brothers and sisters my email um yeah, yeah okay give them inshallah. my email yeah inshallah our team will, will get that sent uh, from all of us, Jazakallah uh, khair. Uh, you know, uh, as usual, there's there's a lot of things, mashallah, to sit down and, and, and dwell upon. Um, exactly. and there's some very strong This things. is the whole point, Yani. These uh, lectures will serve as like introduction, and then, uh, yeah. okay, you can go and thing, work yeah. on them. Yeah, Jazakallah bless khair. You, Have a good evening, inshallah. May Allah bless you all, brothers and sisters. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa